So why we want to have deep layers and why, why you know, these deep layers are important and what gives them power. So I want to, you know, intuitively think about why deep layers. So one way to think about it is what deep layers allows us to do and let's say if, if our problem is recognizing whether in the image that we have uh, whether there is a dog or not, if that is the thing, right? So let's say if you take this image, what this, you know, um, multiple layers allows us you to do is essentially as you progress with each layer, at layer one, you are essentially inferring information at essentially the pixel level. But then at layer two, you start you know, um, doing something like you're trying to understand what are the edges in the overall images, okay? When you're going to layer three, you are trying to understand or infer about the image with using the combinations of edges, right? Rather than a single edge, or you now you are using combination of edges to identify what there is in the figure, okay? Maybe when you go to layer four, then now you're actually focusing on the features that is there in the image. And the features for a dog might be the eyes, you know, the nose portion, the legs, the tail. So when you go to the fourth layer, may the combination of features from previous, which is only edges and other things, now started building upon the eye level or the you know, tail level or the leg level information is, uh, is there. And finally, this could be used to predict whether there is a dog or not. So what allows deep neural networks to be powerful is when we go th progressively through one hidden layer to another, we are basically composing very complex features together from a very simple thing like a pixel, edge, combination of edges, and then to the features like eyes and so on. And that is possible because of the depth, progressive depths that we have in the neural network, and that what makes them possible, you know, powerful. Whereas if you take any other paradigm or any other framework, you will be probably stuck in only one layer and you will be essentially dealing either at the edge level or the pixel level and, you know, the recognition ability that you get through this depth is possibly not possible in other machine learning framework. And that essentially is the horsepower or, you know, the main attributes of deep neural networks that allows you to, you know, uh, capture very, very integrated features and have a high, fairly highly accurate algorithm that can do input to output mapping. Okay. So this covers why deep layers and why deep layers are, you know, uh, important intuitively and what is the advantage they have over classical shallow neural networks or other classical algorithms that might be there. Yep. So, Let's come back and talk about the deep learning performance. What has made deep learning so popular or what has made the artificial neural networks in the current age so popular, right? So here is a plot that we have where we are performing, uh, we are plotting the performance of an algorithm with the amount of data. So as we go along this axis, we are increasing the amount of data. Now, what has also occurred in the last 15, 20 years that we have ability to capture a lot of data. For example, you know, with the explosion of social networking websites and stuff like that, people have started, you know, taking images, videos and stuff like that. And now we have a, this treasure trove of data, which is very, very high volume, okay? Now we can use this class of data that we have and probably do something better for it. But when you use a classical traditional machine learning algorithm, like let's say shallow neural networks or other algorithms, as you increase the amount of data that goes into training the machine learning, you know, the performance of those algorithms actually saturate very quickly and there is not a significant improvement in the performance of the algorithms as the amount of data is increasing, okay? So their performance might be really good when you have small amount of data. And this is something that I also want to point out that if you do not have access to large amount of data, then you might be well suited by using the older algorithm and you do not want to take the advantage of deep neural network because in this region, it might be possible, right, depending upon the amount of data that you have, that, you know, older algorithms might be or the classical algorithms might be performing really, really well, okay? But key point, if you have classical machine learning, you know, they quickly saturate and, you know, the performance of the classical machine learning algorithm or traditional machine learning algorithms does not increase significantly even if you increase the amount of data that you're moving. But what has changed with the deep neural network 
framework that as you increase more amount of data and as you have, you have access to more amount of data, the performance of the algorithms are increased. And what I mean by that is in some cases, right, using classical, even if you have like large amount of data using classical algorithm, you might have a classification accuracy of 60 to 70 percent. But with the same amount of data and deep learning framework, you might have accuracy close to 99.9 percent .9 and so on. OK, so it makes remarkably, or, you know, quantum, you know, sort of sort of, you know, this delta jump in performance that is enabled by deep learning by accessing more amount of data. So the power of deep learning to extract useful juice out of increasing amount of data is what is making it popular, okay? Previously, it doesn't matter how much data you have, the, you know, classical machine learning algorithms, will they will stop, you know, giving you the accuracy at a saturation level. But deep learning, basically, you know, leapfrog that and it allows you to basically fit really good, good models, more, more data, you know, the better the performance of the deep learning algorithm that is there. But again, here is the one uh, portion that I also want to mark and highlight, okay? This portion right here, what you see in this portion, you know, if you have a small amount of data, so the amount of data that we have is small and it's not large, then in some cases, classical machine learning algorithms will perform better than any artificial neural network. So in those cases, I think I will encourage you to think about, you know, uh, using, you know, this older algorithm. So if the data is not that much and if you have very access to small scale data set, then using classical algorithm might be very, very useful. But if you have a large amount of data, then using a framework like deep learning might be more suited to you because it can essentially extract the juice out of, you know, more amount of data that is out there. And this has also caused the popularity of deep neural network that you can get significant performance uh, as you increase the amount of data.